All right. So, uh, Jen, why don't you go ahead and get started and share your screen or I mean, I answer questions if you're not going to share your screen. Will do. I'm going to share a screen. Um, I am going to start with Ingram Spark, and then we'll move into um, KDP Kindle Amazon. <laughs> if I just say something or, or put a note in the chat, and if you think of a question, you can put it in the chat too, so you don't forget it. And like Michael said, we'll cover questions at the end. But these are the most common questions as we get familiar with our author accounts. And I want to remind you, as remember, you are the publisher. You did self-publishing. These are your accounts. You are considered the publisher. You own the rights to your book. Um, these are your sales. This is your title, your metadata. Um, so I just wanted you to kind of get that mindset going that it's why it's so important for you to learn your accounts. And I will say that both accounts are very simple. Um, they're very different companies, Ingram Spark and KDP Kendall. But Ingram Spark is where your paperback is going to be um, housed. And so we have a lovely author named Chris Fontanella who's produced two books with us and he has allowed me to use his account, for example, tonight. So you can see his two books. This, this is the Ingram Spark banner. Uh, this top blue bar will show in the, in the corner here. This is his account number and his contact information. You all recall that it took you close to an hour to finish setup of this account. It asked for tax information because it's going to provide you with a tax form for your royalties. I'd ask for a credit card because when you place personal orders, you can charge the credit card that you put on file, but you can also change that. We'll talk about that more. But if you ever want to know your account number, it's right here or how you set up your business if your accountant or bookkeeper needs to know. And then on the left in this gray bar is really just kind of your, your navigation toolbar. So when you press on home, this is kind of your overall um, front page. And you can learn some things in your Ingram Spark account. So maybe take the time to read some of these articles. Um, and if we ever uploaded a new book, this is where I would go to upload a new format, a new title. And I've just noticed that they've recently updated it to give you kind of a screenshot of the last 30 days um, of, one of, of one of Chris's titles. He's sold 35 books in the past 30 days of this book that he released a few months ago. So when you are looking at your titles, um, you can go in and see like what, what was my retail price? How did uh, Illumify set up my book? You can see that this format is either hardcover, digital, or perfect bound, which means paperback. This will show your publication date, which is your book's birth date. This is your ISBN, which is like your your book's identifier. So let's do um, Jumpstart was his first book. We'll look at his Jumpstart. This, these little buttons basically will jump you to between two pages. Um, this information that's listed here, the author name, the biography, this is like your Illumify imprint. These are your Bizacs, like how we categorize your book um, and your book description and your keywords. All of this is considered metadata. And when in Ingram Spark, when you change metadata, let's say you're in your account and you wanna add more keywords, you can edit and add the keywords, but I just wanna advise you that anytime you change metadata, your book will go under review. And I don't think it's just somebody sitting in a room reviewing your changes. I believe these are massive servers that are combing through any metadata changes and it, will come back to like, uh, it will say your title's not available during that time while it's being reviewed. That doesn't mean your title isn't being sold. Um, but I, I do advise against just willy nilly changing your metadata. Um, it, it just causes a little uh, pause um, in your account while it goes under review. Well, and I just- and Let me jump in. It could, it could affect your, avail your book's availability. It can overall affect your availability. It can. Um, so you can see that his book is in, enabled for worldwide distribution. We will talk about Ingram Sparks uh, distribution and all their online retail partners. This is a paperback that's five and a half by eight and a half with cream paper, black and white with a matte finish. 
and his retail price is $13.99. This compensation, when you see the word compensation, it's the same thing as royalty. So for every book in the United States he sells at this price, uh, he gets $3.79 compensation. And because it has all these other uh, international currencies here, it tells you that your book is being sold throughout their thousands of online retail partners, including around the world. So it auto populates this when I enter your sale price. And we set your book at a 53% discount um, because that's advised. Um, and Michael, maybe you can chime in. At, for a minute yeah, on that. yeah. So the discount is any retailer, including Amazon, we, we tell them, here's the discount we're going to give you. So, so basically, whatever 53% off the retail price, that is what the retailer pays for the book. And, and that's the reason why, uh, uh, and I, you know, and I don't want to um, move too far ahead of, of Jen, but when Amazon plays around with your retail price, it's because they have that 53, 53% discount. And that's why right when your book comes out, it may be priced at $19.99, all of a sudden it's $15.99. Mm -hmm. And authors sometimes call me and go, why is it priced at $15.99? Well, Amazon can price it any any price it wants to, you know, it has to pay 53%, gets 53% off, and then they, you know, then you get paid. That goes to Ingram Spark, and then Ingram Spark takes their amount off. But but anyway, that's that's how it works. They pay their cut, right? And then you can see under this column that says return. If we didn't set return for the United States, um, I'm not. I I know that we always set return for it for uh, Canada and United States. If we didn't do that, some bookstores like Barnes and Noble wouldn't even carry your book. They wouldn't even consider it. So they need to know that if they bought 10 copies, let's say a Barnes and Noble sales rep decides to buy 10 copies for one of their stores, that if they don't sell the eight copies that they can return it and they won't return it, like you're not gonna get it and neither is Ingram Spark, they will just pulp the book or donate it. I'm not sure what they do with it. They might do all the above, but so this is pretty important that it's set at, at this this place. Well, and, and so Amazon does not allow um, if you put your book, you know, the, the competing platform to Ingram Spark is Amazon, Katie, K Kindle Direct Publishing. Kindle Direct Publishing does not allow returns. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's the main reason why uh, retail stores will not stock Amazon published books. Now we can, Ingram Spark puts your book on Amazon, but if it's published through Amazon, then um, bookstores won't carry it. And that's why we always set up our authors with their paperback with Ingram and their digital book with KDP, um, because it would be just this exclusivity you'd have to agree to if we only did Amazon um, KDP Kindle. If we did your digital book in Ingram and not through KDP, you wouldn't be able to do ebook promotions. So that's why the books are divided and split up in these two accounts. Um, so that's kind of just the, the, these two pages of metadata. And then back to this black uh, or gray kind of bar on the left, we're gonna go to reports. Um, they've just in the last year added this new schnazzy report, um, which is kind of a quick glance um, at sales. i just ask a question before you go on to something else that refers to what you've just said. On yes, the, right. the $13.99 sale price, retail price, and that would be a royalty of 379. Mm -hmm. If if Amazon decides to sell it for 1099, does the uh, royalty get reduced? No. No. Oh. You always get the same royalty, no matter how Amazon prices your book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question. It is a great question. Okay, so you can see that you can like he's already <laughs> sold um, some. Uh, let's see, 15 units in the last seven days. You can change these to uh any time frame and do this really nice map view um i guess he, the other book is so new that we probably don't have any sales uh on the other one but let's see let's do let's do 90 days but this is just like i said is a quick sales glance um and the one of my complaints about ingram spark i have two major com two very com complex complaints about Ingram Spark. One is that prior to this new reporting that they offered, their reports were so simple. 
they were these email generated uh, spreadsheets about three pages long and it would basically just say you've sold 15 books and it didn't really tell you where was it to a bookstore was it all to the same person it would it just wouldn't give much detail and i really didn't like that so i i do like their new reports a lot so again compensation is anything royalty related and just um uh transactions are probably if you've had any returns if you have pur purchased any keep in mind that when you place personal orders in your account that does not count towards your royalties so so let's just pause for a moment yeah you, you see the the sales scroll back up jen if you could please yeah. You can see that he sold, uh, scroll over, that looks like France. Yeah, right here. Um, he sold four units in France. Now go to over to Australia. Australia. Mm -hmm. Two units in Australia. So there are, there's a print on demand printer in London or the London area, and there's one in Australia. And that's how come they could distribute those books to those countries. And I'm sure that, that Chris, the author, doesn't even know these people, but he sold six right. books in, in either in Europe or in Australia. So and yeah, in the, example to reach if you can open the chat box i put in a link to and i know that i've sent this link to many of you i'm happy to send it to you or you're, you can look it up by googling ingram spark distribution but it'll show you their worldwide reach it'll give you examples of their thousands and thousands of retail partners but they are the world's largest printer and distributor um, they distribute to libraries brick and mortar bookstores, um, some of their, their 40,000 independent and chain bookstores, but some of their retail partners are Apple, Kobo, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Bertram's, Waterstones, Booktopia, and more. So that just gives you an example. This, this classic report um, back on your left bar, well, again, break down for you all the different ones. Since Chris doesn't have any eBooks in here, that wouldn't apply. Print would be for his paperback. Publisher compensation is for his royalties. If he had any unpaid invoices, that might be like a return. But I will tell you in the many years that I've been doing this for authors, I've only seen one author get charged for a return. Um, and I think it was just a fluke. I think one bookstore bought maybe a case of books and returned half of them. Right. Um, but that is, you know, that is a risk that you ensue as, a, you know, incur as an author. So just to be aware of it. Um, this, uh, these different sales, these different reports, again, are not very detailed. They're usually ask you for the period that you want to check, and then it will email you the generated report. And if it were me, I would go back like a year and I would click on all the currencies. And because he has two ISBNs in his account, I would specify which ISBN or I would do both and it would probably detail that. And then I would ask for it to be emailed as a file attachment to me. So most of these reports under the classic, the screen is gonna look like this. But so, you're also gonna be emailed a monthly sales report in a, an Excel spreadsheet um and it's not very easy to understand it's not and it's just one long row yeah um not a column and yep. so you gotta keep scrolling to the right scrolling to the right yep. but they will send that to you every month they will and they should generate tax forms for you at during tax season so that you can submit to your accountant or your bookkeeper what your royalties were so you know pay taxes on that um and then on the the gray black bar on the left you'll also see orders and because he has two books in here um, i can just click on one and add that items to the order or i can order from both but in this case i'll just act like i'm going to order this one book and then these little gray blue bars are the buttons that proceed you know help you proceed to the next screen and there are essentially three screens in the order under orders so you're not don't be terrified that if you submit right here update order that you've already placed an order you've got two more screens to go so this shows you the ship to address let's say you have um, somebody that wants to buy a case of your books and they want to pay for it you can take their credit card and order it through your account again you will not be receiving royalties for orders that way 
but let's say that you just want to do that for family or friends or somebody that's a nonprofit or whatever it is. Um, when you, so you can change that shipping address right here. Um, when you decide how many you want to order, you can play with it. It's this order quantity box. It's the only thing you can alter. This next uh, number is how many books will fit in one carton. But just ignore that. And let's just say you want to order 50 books. Um, then you would go down to the bottom and you would update the order. Um, and it'll automatically start changing the shipping, the tax. The, the handling is always like $1.99. Um, so it's interesting. They, they're unhappy with Chris's address because he has too many um, characters in his address. But typically, you'll be offered right, right under this, um, this line, you'll see on the left here is how would you like to print your book? Um, and they're only offering him economy service here. Sometimes they'll offer rush service, expedited service, and they'll show you the cost breakdown for 50 books um, and all your options. And because it's mad about the address, it's not going to show us the different ways we can ship. But they often will offer you basic that has no tracking um, and no insurance. The next one would be like residential ground. There's commercial ground. There's rush. So you really have to determine how quickly do you want your books printed and how quickly do you want your books shipped? And obviously you'll pay more the faster you want them printed and the faster you want them shipped. Um, normally it will take about five business days for them to print a regular order. So again, that's like Monday through Friday, not it, even though these books are print on demand and you're so used to getting a book from Amazon within a day or two, um, these are print on demand, but this is going to one of like their large seven printers located around the country. And it just takes a, a little bit longer. And you're getting- um, During also. the Christmas season, it slows down. Yes. So just think ahead, like anytime after August, if you order books, it could, and, and especially during the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, people were having to wait three, four weeks yes. for, for just a regular order. Yes. So, so that's, so keep that on the back burner. Um, I know we just got done with the Christmas season, but when we come back <laughs> late summer, um, if you want to order a box of books, um, just keep that in mind. Okay. So now we're seeing, cause I changed his address. Now it's happier with me. So you can see that the printing options are for economy express and rush. You can see the difference. And then I changed the order quantity to 10 books. Um, if you ever want to see how these different shipping methods vary, this is a hyperlink. It will take you to a description of their um, shipping methods. And you can see that he pays $2.79 per book. So for 10 books, that's $27.90, $1.99 handling, about $11.10 shipping. He has to pay tax based on his where he's shipping them to. And then the next screen um, is kind of a, 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 oh, see, because I selected basic and basic does not have any track of tracking, then I have to select this agreement that I understand that I'm not, they're not responsible for lost or damaged shipping. So the difference is about $3.50 or more. So you may want to go and commercial is one of the cheaper ways to go. And because this is being shipped to his business, it recognized that and only gave me commercial and not residential. So just keep that in mind. Um, the, by the way, the price break in Ingram Spark is 750 books. At 750 bucks, you will get quite a price break, but it will be a little bit short, longer printing time and it will be delivered to you differently. It's called economy heavyweight. And they sometimes subcontract out that, sh that printing job to another printer. And you have to agree to certain things when you take that, but it is a tremendous price break. Well, so before the pandemic, <clears throat> it took about three weeks to get that delivered, which was a steal. Now, like the last time I checked, it might have been during the Christmas season. I think it was like 100 business days. I mean, it was a and, long wait. And it'll revert back to a shorter time period now that their volume is less. But right. um, I mean, if you think about it, thousands and thousands of books are being uploaded to Ingram Spark every day. And 
billions of books are being printed every day. So they're, they're a busy company. Um, well, yeah, and, and in fact, so a buddy of mine got a tour of one of their printing facilities. He, he was forbidden to bring his iPhone with him. But when he walked inside, they told him that they they print 50,000 books a day and only two people work the machines. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. Which might explain, and if I can say share this, Marie, one of our authors who's joining us on this call, she recently published with us. She's had a couple people report that their books are kind of falling apart. It could have been a bad batch and that Amazon purchased you know a batch of books and they weren't printed well and that can happen i mean if you yeah it's hard to explain what it, it looks like in a printing company but these are massive machines and like michael said very few people running them so well and and that's you know the the, the bad print run yeah so yeah. i think that amazon ordered let's say 10 books 15 yeah. books it was a bad print run so the pages were pulling out out of all of our authors that's happened two or three times yeah it's very happen. rare but it does happen and and you know and, and it's unfortunate when it does happen uh because it, it, it it's hard on the author there's nothing yeah. we can do to, in, we can't do anything about it except you know ask the authors to or the the customers to get a refund or get a new new copy of the book and yeah. i've seen ingram spark just go ahead and send them a new shipment of books yeah. or a new book yeah i have to show evidence I had a strange occurrence with one of my copies. The first page is the acknowledgement page. The half title page is gone. The uh, the introduction is gone, or is the introduction there? But uh, you no, know, the intro is there, but the table of contents is missing. So some, uh, but no missing pages at the back. So Lord only knows how. A couple pages up front got missed, and there was only one in the entire batch of fifty books that I got that that happened. And well, I can, uh, I can and we had you. one one time yeah. we had a book that was ordered. Person ordered a book. It included our book cover and another, uh, not even one of our company's books. The interior was totally different. Wrong. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I can assure you that when I, I, because I personally will upload book files for the authors, so. For those of you that haven't finished your, your project with us, you don't know this yet, but I will upload it. And I'm uploading two files, a cover file. It's your full cover and it's one file and your interior file. And it's one complete file. And it is the file that you approved, the file we approved. So I can guarantee you, it's not like I uploaded 30 files for the 30 pages or it, it, it's just two files. So it's truly just a mishap on the printers and it's not. I don't think it's a long range problem like for Marie. I think that that was just a bad batch. So on this second page for the orders, this is kind of just a chance to review the order. And if you want to add a purchase order number for your own in bookkeeping purposes, but almost no authors I know do this. If you wanted to email the order to someone, you don't, you don't need to because they'll automatically email you because you are the account holder, you are the author. And then on this next page, um, you just click, I'm ready to proceed to payment. And so this is your last page um, before you're submitting your order. And you can pay with the credit card you have on file or you can pay with a new credit card. But as soon as you submit payment information, you have placed an order. So um, then if you ever wanna come back into your account and check on the status of your order, like let's see if Chris, I know Chris has placed orders. So these are all the submitted orders. They assign an SPK number and he placed this order on December 14th. And you can always go in and see like it, this one's already shipped. This order status will be on this bottom right where my, my cursor is bouncing. So um, you can check the status of your order and it will provide a tracking number if you select that kind of shipping method. Like I said, the basic doesn't provide a shipping a tracking number. Um, and then I'm not really familiar with tools and resources. I have gone in on the marketing tab on that far left bar. Um, when, I, when I pay for somebody to be in the Ingram Spark catalog, and Michael can talk about the catalog if you wanted to know anything, but Again, more things for you just to learn um, about Ingram Spark here. And just oh, hold, stop right there for a second. Yeah. So, so if you look on the right hand side, it says pricing and calculators. Uh, many of you, I've shown you 
the uh, like the compensation calculator and, okay. and big, or the printing and shipping calculator, that's when you can play around with different numbers. And, and so when I've had meetings with many of you, I've just plugged in the numbers there so that um, <coughs> anyway, so that those are the <coughs> bookmarked. And just the last thing is, is that before, well, really right about the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, they stopped providing live chat and stopped providing phone contact. And again, they're the world's largest printer and distributor. I like everyone, I think that they became stressed, uh, short staffed, and they've never gone back and I don't believe they will. So if you ever need to contact them, you're really going to have to reach out by submitting a customer support ticket. And they are going to ask you for your account number and your ISBN number. So if you're saying like, why is my book doing this or, but this is also a community forum opportunity. So you could look here. Um, and generally their contact support responses are pretty AI no. uh, generated. They're not great. So that's my other big complaint about Ingram is I don't think their customer support is all that great. Great. Okay. Can so I say something. You can. Yeah, Anne. Um, I had a couple of books come through where the black on the cover had, you know, it was just wrong, and I got in touch with them. I mean, this was back when the book came out, um, eighteen months ago, and they did replace those. I had to send them a picture of it. Yeah. And then they replaced them with like no trouble. But I, you know, it was all done through email and all of that, but they took care of it. And yeah. and I, I think Anne brings up a good point. If you ever place a personal order and that shipment comes damaged or whatever, if you haven't selected that basic shipping that doesn't, is not responsible for damage or loss, just remember that, that you're taking that risk if you select that shipping method, but take pictures, document, and then when you do go to submit a customer support ticket, you want your account number and the ISBN number, and you want to include, you can attach pictures of that damaged shipment. Okay. Um, so again, in the chat, I put in a link to how does Amazon, how does Ingram Spark distribute? Um, and I know that was a lot of information. This might be a good time to ask questions about Ingram Spark, and then we can move on to KDP Kendall. Or other things. Or other things, yeah. Anybody have any questions? Oh my goodness. Good. Well, you I have a question. Nothing. <clears throat> so when um, Ingram Spark shows you the number of books sold, right, mm -hmm. and then your compensation and stuff, that's is that the total number of books they've printed, or is that the ones you? you're getting royalties off of. You understand what I'm saying? I do. The difference is like, let's say they've printed a hundred, but 30 of those were your personal order. You're only getting, you're only getting sales shown for the 70, I believe. Right, that's I, right. I don't but, think but, but the total number, not even worrying about the royalties. Um, like if it says uh, there's been a thousand books printed, does that include the ones you've personally bought? I don't think so because I think it's referring to it as sales. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yours, so that's good news. <laughs> yours are not sales, yours are orders. Right. I think okay. it would refer, <laughs> the wording of it would be that orders would, would relate to okay. something that you did okay. internally. Thank sales you. Would be outside of you. Sure. Okay. Anybody else want to give me time? Could, could you just quickly reiterate? the leeway time to place an order, you were saying, five, I just wanna make sure I heard that correctly. If you have a launch party or something, what would be the appropriate wiggle room to make sure? Okay. Well, you, wanna, you wanna order your books as soon as possible. Yeah. But, um, you know, apart from the Christmas season, usually you can order books and you will have them in one week, just under normal conditions which is actually pretty amazing yeah. that they can yeah. print the books and mail them. And it's, it's not, it's just economy service. But and, I, and you'll I would them. always err on the side of being conservative. Sure. Right. I would yeah. always be as, as preemptive as you can be, you know, um, sure. give as much time. But 
it does say take can take five business days again that's not including weekends for yeah. plus the printing and then another what one to six shipping depending on the shipping method that you've selected yeah. and you you will pay if you need faster shipping and faster uh printing so okay, those cool. are options but okay. now no, uh vera brennan asked a question how many need to be ordered to receive a discount and basically that's it all depends on the number of books the more books you order the the, the better the discount. Now, the difference between two, 1,000 and 2,000 books isn't as great as it is like one book to 10 books. <clears throat> but one book may cost you $10 to print and ship and you order 10 books and your cost per book is going to be half that amount or, or three quarters that amount. So- and you know. again, Vera, the price break in Ingram Spark is 750 books. And you well, for just- For the significant, at that point, they, they drop it by a third. But but it, it it's a graduated thing, um, you know. But but at seven fifty is when you get the really serious discount. And is that yeah. scale in that price calculator? Just to no, see I, you just plug in the numbers and you just plug. There's no like visual scale, like no. okay. And, and, and how we found this, I just pl I spent a morning just playing around on the <clears throat> printing and shipping thing until I found out it's right here at seven fifty where the big price jump. Yeah. Um, you know. Happens of the cost. And for those authors that already have the title already uploaded in your account, play with that screen. You haven't made any order. You haven't paid anything. You can change that screen a hundred times as long as you know it, to show you the, the differences. And you haven't you know ordered till you proceed to the next two screens. So, okay. Um, is everyone looking at Kindle Direct Publishing now? Is that what's being yes. shared? Okay, excellent. So again, we're in Chris's um, KDP account because he was gracious enough to let us. Um, when you log in, this is usually the, the dashboard, the bookshelf as they call it. Um, I really like how user-friendly the KDP Kindle account is. And as opposed to Ingram Spark, their, content, their customer service at Kindle is very fast and they almost always offer a variety of ways to get in touch depending on the issue. Um, so let's say, for example, and up here at the very top of the screen, it'll give your account information, it'll ask what language you want it, and then help is the button that will lead you to customer support. And they have a lot of help topics and provide you a lot of articles that may answer your question before you even go to customer service. But at the very bottom, it'll say, you can't find help in our, uh, an your answer in our help pages, then contact us. And then it will ask, oh goodness, it logged me out. Um, then it will ask what you really want to know, and it will get really defined about what kind of help you need, um, because it's going to direct you to the right person. Let me get out of this screen. Um, so you can see, how can we help? If you just say, I want questions about like my sales report, it'll offer two links. If you want to ask about uh, author central, I think, which we will talk about tonight. If you click on that, it usually, see, it will usually populate, how do you want to get in touch with us? Um, managing your book series. Let's see if it will, see like this, this gives you several ways to reach out to them. And it just keeps refining your search so that you're directed to the right people. Um, so I've, I found that their customer service is very responsive. So then you really have these four um, categories for this website is that you have your reports community, which is like ways to uh, learn about how to manage your Amazon Author Central. And then marketing is your Amazon Author Central page. Um, as soon as you get a book uploaded on your bookshelf in Kindle Direct, you'll have basically what's called an Amazon Author Central page. And I've put in the chat box a really good article from Readsy about how you can bolster your Amazon Author Central page. You can upload your author photo, you can upload a bio. You, I think you're allowed one review um, that you can upload yourself because as you might know, Amazon's really particular about it has to be a verified purchaser, but I think you can put in one review in your Amazon Author Central page. Um, and then, and it's really easy. And I encourage you 
to manage your own author central page. I've had a lot of authors ask me to do it and it really is for you to, um, to manage. Like um, Chris was one of the authors that asked me to upload his photo, but it's so simple. Um, I'll even show you. All you do is edit profile and you add your picture. Yeah. Uh, I have noticed, actually, you can input at your book uh, dozens of reviews as long as it's whatever, 10,000 characters or 14,000 limit uh, under the editorial reviews. You just, whatever you, you want to call an editorial review, you could put it in, put some dashes, put some more, put some dashes, put another. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've never noticed this before, but you can see how your your author page looks in different countries and different languages. That's very cool. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I do encourage you to just get familiar with this account. You're not going to mess anything up. And as opposed to um, Ingram Spark, if you are to change metadata in this account, it doesn't um, it doesn't throw it all into kind of a chaos like it does um, well you, it, de it depends on what you change because uh, i have made changes and it will put it back into a re in review uh -huh. but it's usually a quick turnaround and you'll get an email again that your book's available okay thank you for telling us that i really appreciate you telling me that um not allowing me to let's see if it'll allow me to go all the way back okay you know and what let's do jen if we can have wrap this part up in the next five minutes. That way we'll at least have 15 minutes for okay, okay, questions. Good. And then a lot of times you'll see with, especially with really prolific, famous writers, you'll see that they have banners. Mm -hmm. This is called A plus content. Um, you, can, you can talk to Michael about that and schedule a meeting. You can also talk to Michael about running an ebook promotion um, or purchasing Amazon ads. He's really kind of our expert on that. And then let's just look really quickly at reports. Um, you could set the, you can set it for month to date, or you can look at, let me see, there's a really good, uh, report that I like. Okay. Reports, orders. You can change this to be last year. It'll show you a graph. This was kind of a hike in a uh, spike in his ebook sales because we did an ebook promotion. So he sold a lot of books in a few days or gave away a lot of books because we were running a promotion. Mm -hmm. um, you can compare your books. You can change all these reports. You're not going to mess up anything as you look at these. And you can see that this was a book he did prior to coming with the Lumify that we've loaded into his account. Um, but it should tell you, you know, total units. This is a really user-friendly report um, dashboard. And then just kind of the metadata we were talking about and Joseph mentioned, um, you can do things like change your pricing or content or details, but again, mm. you run the risk of um, causing your book to kind of go under review. Um, and while we're talking about just um, revisions, I just wanted to say that it's not uncommon for us to have an author post-production want to do a revision. And what that entails, just really quickly, is that we have to go back to our uh, our contractors, so like our typesetter, and if it's a cover change, our cover designer, and we have to pay them to make the change, whether it's one change or a hundred. So our current um, revision price, Michael, is it three fifty? Three hundred. Three hundred. First fifty revisions, and then a dollar per revision after that. And then for the cover, it's hundred dollars. And I want to just tell you that it does involve lots of people, and then it does involve uploading those new files and having those files go under review. And I've noticed, as I said with Ingram Spark, whether you're changing metadata or you're changing the files, I have seen it um, stall out there like like a week or two or more. So I've I've even dealt with it like for a month where I was waiting for that proof to come. And the whole time the author's like, oh, my book's just not available selling. Well, the problem is you already have your book selling. So they can't switch the files till they're done satisfying the orders that came through up to the day that we submitted the revised files and they approved it. So that's why it, it kind of takes forever. So 
I'm not discouraging you from making revisions, but I want you to be aware it's a very involved process and it can be lengthy. Can I, can I throw in one other thing that's happened recently? <clears throat> a couple of times we have had um, on Kindle Direct Publishing, just with the ebook, um, Kim, uh, K, uh, KDP won't broadcast the book. And, and, and <laughs> come back and said, well, we need, uh, it looks like your book cover, uh, you don't have the rights to it. And so we've had to go back to the book cover designer, get evidence that she purchased the rights to it. And we have one author and we've been going round and round for months. And I don't know what the problem is, but, but we've done everything in our power. And actually what we're doing now with this author is we're pulling the ebook off. We're going to let a week go by and then we're going to re upload the files because for whatever reason, and I think it's partly random. Mm -hmm. um, so just so you know that that's uh, one of the things that we've had to deal with lately. So I feel like it's very important for you to understand that you're dealing with behemoth, behemoth companies here, big servers, not, not individuals, but big, big companies, big computer servers. And so just keep that in mind that it's not a personal thing. It's not a a you thing people encounter if you were to google you know ingram spark people have blogged about you know experiences they've had challenges they've had but for the most part it's just really worth it because they are they have such a wide reach and um, it is a good setup for self-published authors now vera raised her hand so vera go ahead and ask your question yeah this, <clears throat> this is my question my book has a you know like a forward and this and that and the other but when i come through for a kindle for a kindle book i would rather it just begin at a certain place how do i go about assuring that so we just need to communicate you and i together to Jeff, our editorial director that you would like a, a certain version of your ebook um to be to vary from the paperback they're okay. two different files anyway and it can easily have different front matter or um right that's well, and, and, and the order is important. So we always finish the print book first, and then we give instructions to the typesetter to go ahead and develop the ebook. So we'll get the, you know, the full uh, print book done, and then we'll just tell her, take off this and this and this, and that's really not that hard. Oh, great, great. That's great. <clears throat> I have a question for Vero. Why would you want them different? Well, if I'm using an ebook, the stuff I have at the beginning of my uh, my paperback includes why I wrote the book, who came along for the ride, all kinds of information, which is not really pertinent to the book itself. So when, when I'm just wanting to read it for what it's pertinent about, pertinent about, I can start at a certain place. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm still confused because, yeah, I wrote an introduction in my book and I, I don't understand why there would be any reason why I would want to leave any words of my physical book out of my Kindle. Uh, otherwise, they're not getting the same book. Well, I, I understand what you're saying, but the fact is this particular book, okay, has a particular purpose and all the stuff about the forward and the gratitude the, you know the acknowledgments and so forth and so on that that may not be pertinent to the reader at all because of it my might. target my target audience i think is just after what the book itself is about to say well, and and well we will honor you know whatever the author wants to do so if that's what you want to do well, that's what we'll do it might help Joseph to know that Vera's book is a devotional for um, 20 somethings. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like in my latest, How to Write a Book and Get It Published Hints, Tips, and Techniques. Right. I mean, several times I make that point. Certain sections may not relate to your book, uh, whether you have a forward or an afterward and about the author or about the book section. But I never dreamed that someone may want it in the physical, but not the virtual like this, or I'd made a comment. But yeah, it all depends on the content of your book. Right, um, and your target audience, who your target audience is. Yeah, fiction, nonfiction, uh, right. technical, 
uh, not everything applies exactly. So right. let's keep it moving on. Um, Jen, Marie, you've quick... got a question. You have your hand up. Real quickly, I'm going to show uh, what a novice I am here. But what is a launch party? And oh. am I too late? Oh. Michael, do you want to take that question? So a launch party is basically a party to celebrate <laughs> the launch of your book. And 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 it's I know it sounds simple, but that's, you know, your book came out not that long ago. I don't think it's too late to throw a launch party. Yeah. Uh, you know, you contact all your friends. Sometimes you do it at your house. You know, we've had, you know, um, we have an event center where Illumify is located. So we've had a few launch parties at the <laughs> event center. Some people choose a tap house or a library or a bookstore and, and you invite everybody you can and you're just celebrating it. The format of the launch party, the way we usually do it is um, oftentimes, I like to go to the launch party of our authors and I'll play the MC yeah. and I welcome everybody. I talk about how hard it is to write a book because all of you know how hard it is to write a book. <laughs> not, not, everybody's not. Yeah. And then, yeah. and, then um, and then I turn it over to the <laughs> author and the author Thanks everybody. Thanks whoever was a part of the process. And, and then um, oftentimes they'll read excerpts. I always recommend, you know, don't read a, a 10 minute excerpt, read like two or three, two or three minute excerpts. And then you open it up for questions. And it's amazing. Every time I've been at one of these lodge parties, people ask questions. They're curious. And, and we've had some really good um, back and forths uh, some, uh, with, with, the, with the question and answer. And then after that, then you tell everybody I'm selling books and you have a person there who's going to take the money so that you can focus on talking to the people standing in line and you autograph the book. And, uh, you know, and usually the, the, the formal part of the launch party is going to be 20 to 30 minutes at the most. And then, and you serve refreshments or whatever, and, and everybody's happy. And that's just social. Yep. And then and just I'm a little tidbit. Um, just a little parenthetical thing. I grew up in a little itty bitty town in Vermont and uh, connected with somebody there. Uh, and he he's an editor and a writer and asked about my book. And I mentioned Illumify and he just, he sang the praises of Jeff Stone. Apparently he worked with Jeff Stone's father and just wow. was really impressed with Illumify. <laughs> Well, we, there was a pastor in Vermont, and we published, I think, three of his books. And this was like four years ago, and um, really kind man. So I, that's Jeff, so interesting. Jeff grew up in the publishing world. His dad was in publishing, so I think. And he, that's he said he knew the dad as well. Yeah, yeah. That is so interesting. That is interesting. Um, Jamie, you had a question. Oh, I just, Jen, you had mentioned you were putting things in the chat, and I'm not seeing anything except Vera's comment. Is is everyone else seeing things you said you've been posting? No, Jane, no, it's, no, you're, you're right, Jamie. In the chat. There's okay. nothing in the chat. So I just want to make sure I was looking for things. I thought I was in the right place. Jen may have accidentally something sent something in chat directly to someone else and forgot to put. It says to everyone. To the address yeah. to everyone, does it? Anyway, I wasn't yeah. sure what you were posting. Okay, thank but, you. And there just a real quick thing on the launch parties. I've done several launch parties, and it's really fun to do kind of giveaways and make it fun and interactive, too. Right. Everyone kind of, that's kind of a fun way to get people to come as well. And Well, yeah. and, there's, there, and, and you're right. And there's a difference between a book signing and a book launch party. Yeah. Book signings are terrifying. Yeah. And and I did one at, at Mardell Christian Bookstore in 2008. And I'm telling everybody about it. And uh, my book, Strange Fire, Holy Fire, came out. Four people showed up. Yeah. And I was there for two hours. And I'm looking at the people coming to the, to the bookstore. Book launch party is totally different. And 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 yeah, much more fun. A bunch of those. <laughs> so, it's a lot more fun than a party than a sign. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody did a launch party. Um, like a pre, pre printing, I don't know, before the book was out. So mm -hmm. how do you do that? If you don't have a book yet, you can have a launch party and say, you can, 
do a really creative thing. And Karen is a wonderful person to talk to. Both Karen and Lisa, um, because they're published authors, they've both thrown great parties and they're so creative. But you can have these really great um, bookmarks printed for very little and give them away with like a QR code on it. It has a sample chapter. There's so many cool things you can do without the book. Um, it, well, I, I, let, me, let, me, let me build on that. So, so if you have your pub date that's like a month or two out, pub date meaning the date, the book birthday of your, of your book, when the book is released. But, and so you can sell books pre-sale before then, but also um, because it's your account, you can order copies of your book before they go on sale. So you can have a book launch party and you can order hundred copies of your book and hold your book launch party a week or two before your pub date. And, and uh, Ingram Spark, the minute your files are approved, you can order copies of your book, even if your pub date's six months down the road. Okay. I did um, repost the questions in the chat, but if you still can't, or not the questions, sorry, the links, but if they're still not showing up, I'm happy to email them to everyone who- um, No, they're there now. They're there now. Oh, excellent, okay. Anybody else? Well, uh, Mike, you sent out a, another separate email about that chat, uh, G, chat GP T, T, T mm -hmm. yeah. And being a former IT guy, I dug into it. And I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm concerned that whenever anything new comes along, you got to be careful. Now, the terms of service and a thing they call terms and policies don't discuss copyright. Only the help bot responded when I said, will open AI can claim copyright over what output I generate with the API. And it says a open AI will not claim copyright. However, it doesn't, in my opinion, go as far as it needs to, which is why I reached out to the open AI company, which Elon Musk was part of founding years ago. Uh, it doesn't say the chat GPT output is hereby entered into the public domain. So be careful with it until that point. So, so one of the things I've played around with, and I haven't done this yet, is when I put in a request or ask a question to chat GPT, ask them to include citations. And so that, that's where how you voice the question is so important. Um, and yeah. one of the downfalls of chat GPT is it's not going to be 100% accurate. So when I use it for research, I'm also looking for pointing me in the right direction so I can verify. But but uh, anyway, if you didn't right. read the blog post today, I actually, there was a lot of people reading it today. Um, it was just fascinating, just the all, that whole topic. So Well, yeah, that's the other key there. It may regurgitate something somebody else said. And if it's not clear, it's quoting somebody else. And you use what it gave you, assuming it was public domain and not copyright, you're in trouble for using copyright. So you've got to be very careful with right. it. Right. Right. Anybody uh, else? I yeah. Sorry, I can't figure out how to raise my hand on this thing. I've been looking for it, hand, but I'm just going to raise my hand. <laughs> um, I uh, finished my manuscript this week, Michael. Good job. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, um, so I guess my question, and I don't know if this is the right group for it or not, but um, do I? What What's the editing plan? Like, does do I? hire somebody from Illumify to edit? Do I ask a friend to edit? What do I, I've got people that have read parts of it, but I just <laughs> need somebody to, you know, edit. And I don't know really my next step. So I, I saw your email. I thought, well, I'll just fine and ask my Okay, question. so, so um, we require a professional copy edit. That's the one requirement we have because we were telling our authors your book's gonna look, feel, and read like a Harper Collins. Right. So if you have a copy good. editor, then okay. it'd be a really good job to run that person by Jeff Stone. Yep. And Jeff Stone will contact that person and find out if they really know what they're doing. 
Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who are good at like reading your manuscript, but they're not necessarily. Oh, no, no, they're just friends that I've okay. had reading. Right. No, it's nothing. No, official. but that's a very important first step. Friends and family checking your manuscript right. and I finding agree. some things right. and potentially. But I hire you to do the copy editing. Right. Already. Right. So it's already part of the plan. So, so I would send it to Jen. Or, or Jeff, if you've been in communication with him, but Jen's usually the right person because she's your book shepherd. Uh -huh. And then she'll move it forward to, to Jeff. Yep. And he may even have questions for you before he moves it to uh, the copy editor. Yep. So- um, How do I know uh, it's ready though, to go to Jen? I, I'm just nervous. There's no, <laughs> such, no such thing as perfect. No, book that's is right. never done. I didn't say perfect, I said ready. <laughs> yeah, Joseph well. has done two books with us, so he knows, but it will, you know, you'll see it several times still after you submit it to Jeff. It, yeah. It'll volley between you and Jeff, who will be your liaison to the copy editor many times until you're satisfied. Uh -huh. And then same thing during typesetting, you're going to see your manuscript many, many times. Um, it's really a personal thing, though, when you're ready to release it, you're ready to stop working on it. That's so, when. Yeah. yeah, but you're also working with Karen Bouchard, aren't you, Janet? Yes, I, I so, have it for a while. I've just been zeroing in, but I have worked with Karen, yes. I yeah. would ask her, is it ready? And she'll tell you whether it's ready or not. <laughs> yeah, seen it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From, from your perspective, though, again, in my new book on how to write and publish, that's deadlines and contracts is one of the things. There, yeah, there's no such thing as perfect. You nine months after Terror Strikes came out, I'm still thinking, oh, I wish I could have included that, maybe taken that out, put this in instead. You will always second guess, but there does have to come a time where you say, I'm comfortable enough with this to move forward. Right. Right. Um, Ann, did you have a question? I did. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Um <laughs> So what's your take on audiobooks, Michael? Okay, so because that's I have the an fastest audiobook. growing thing, right? Right. I, I have a coordinator. When people ask me about audiobooks and I and I uh, nudge them her direction, I haven't made a big deal about it yet because I haven't been convinced that people are going to recoup their investment. Okay. Because an audiobook is going to run you four or five thousand dollars. And and now your your royalties on an audiobook are pretty high. It's like 60, 70% of the retail price. But, you know, I mean, you've got to sell a lot of audiobooks. And, and so I just, I'm not going to present something to our authors and I'm not convinced it's, it's, you've got at least a shot at recouping your investment. Right. But we do have a coordinator and, and you've sold a lot of books. So if yeah. you're interested in, in, um, in talking to Mackenzie, I will put you in touch with her. And yeah. she'll tell you she's actually a narrator for audiobooks with a, a studio in Nashville. And um, a lot of people want to voice their own books, and that's okay. Um, you know, but uh, you work with a, if you work with a, uh, <coughs> they'll give you all sorts of options for voices or narrators on your audiobook. Yeah, I would like that information because I've had people ask me about that. Okay. I think your book might be a good candidate for that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And Lynn Hine, her husband uh, perished in the 9-11 uh, tragedy. He was a, a firefighter. And, and Anne, I mean, she has promoted that her book. I mean, she travels around the country. I, I mean, she's just a rock star in terms of promoting her book. Yeah. So. Just trying. <laughs> Got to push it out of your circle and push and that, it a little further. <laughs> that brings me to a really good point. And we discussed this. We had an October conference for MFI that was really a one-day conference all about the business of, of being an author, like how to promote, how to have a launch party, how to, we may even do that same kind of format again as a, as a conference this year, because I think it's so valuable. You know, you finish your manuscript and you're like, now what? And we don't, a lot of our writers, we don't have that skill set, but it, there's no one way to do it. There's no right way. There's your way and what you're comfortable with. And, and even how much you want to engage with your books online, you know, with Ingram Spark. Some people want to really get to know their account and check their orders all the time. And some people are like, I just hope this works out great. You know, um, it, it's really, 
no one way to do it, but I just, as I said at the beginning of our Q and A tonight, just it's important that your mindset is still that this is my project. I invested in it. Um, now it's produced, and what I do with it is very important. Yes, Joseph. Yeah, I have the audio book thing. Mike and I did talk about it. Now, like my Terror Strikes book would need a narrator, and there's a letter to the editor, and what I introduce a blog within a book. My cost would be way too high to ever get an ROI on because I'd need three voices. Now, I do mention on my terrorstrikes.info site, though, under audiobook, because I do get that question that you could sell more Kindles and have a talkback surface, it's called. Tap the accessibility in Kindle, then that talkback function, and it will read you the ebook. You don't need an audio book. Or, again, if you buy it in an EPUB form, you can have a laptop app read the book rather than buying a, a, an official audio version. So there are those options. Now, now let me also say, too, when an author wants to voice their own um, audio book, if you don't have a lot of experience in, as a speaker, uh, your your studio costs are going to be more expensive because if you have us and ahs and mispronunciations and then you <laughs> edit edit your your audiobook more. So that's where when you get a professional, it's going to be smoother and they're not going to the editing at least part is not going to be as expensive. Yeah, fortunately today again to go back to AI and tech, uh, I was just talking with Don McCauley the other day of the author show to do an interview for my second book. And we got off on that talk about audio books there also, because he works with some audio files, obviously dealing with the interviews. So there is software out there that is smart enough, but generally not something you and I are gonna be able to buy. But if you go through the right professional, it can transcribe automatically, find the ums, the ahs, the like, and you know that if they don't belong there, cut them. So let's let's take one or two more questions. Anybody who hasn't asked anything? Yes, Ruth. Um, just a quick nuts and bolts question. Um, on the if you wanted to order a, a hundred books, say, and am I right in understanding that if you have them ship basic, if something is wrong, like that cover has black on it or something, you you have no recourse. No. And so you. That's a, good, that's a good question, Ruth, because that really is more of a printing issue and not a shipping issue. It, I think that's saying that if there's an issue with the shipping, you don't have recourse. But that wouldn't mean that, that, that right. if it comes with a oh, print. Oh, I see. If there were problems with the introduction or something, it wasn't printed properly. You do, even if you use mm. basic, it would still be taken care of. Yes. yes. Oh, OK. Good, good yeah. answer. And Phyllis, okay. you had your hand raised. And like Janet, I don't know where that hand is. So. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I just, I'm at the point of uh, proving the layout. And I just wondered, what are the next steps between that and the book being printed? You're getting close. You're getting really close. You're in typesetting. So um, that's why we sent you coffee. <laughs> 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 gotta stay awake. Gotta stay awake for the rest of the process. Um, you're getting pretty close, and once you're you volleyed back and forth using Jeff, of course, as your liaison between you and the typesetter. When you're kind of satisfied, you don't have any more edits. Then Jeff's going to ask you, "Are you are you ready for the final approval?" And at the final approval, you'll execute a document for us. You'll submit final payment, and then your files will be uploaded. So you can at any point in this process pause if you need to um or or let her rip we have a lot of authors that just are ready they're tired of looking at it um but, <laughs> yeah but i mean it, it takes 10-ish days to turn it around once the manuscripts turned into the typesetter and then after that you know you want to do a full read through because you're going to catch stuff mark it up but you're probably once you get that pdf back you could be you know a month or less away and I think that you bring up a really good question is that some people think it's just so instantaneous 
but really it is your typesetting, you're done typesetting, we send you the final approval, you sign final approval, you submit final payment. Once we receive final payment, I upload files. It takes Ingram Spark several days to review the files. Sometimes they, if they're really experiencing volume levels, it can take them a week to get me a proof to approve. So it's not the minute I upload your book file to your account that you can place an order. Um, it takes, I would be conservative to say, give it like, give me a week or two uh, once we're done before you're anticipating being able to place an order and get an order. So if you're planning a launch party or any event, um, it, it sometimes can take several days for me to get a proof to approve. As soon as that proof is approved in your Ingham Spark account, you can place personal orders. Well, we've had one or two times where it took as much as a month. So, and, and who knows why? So, and then sometimes 24 hours. Yep. So, but it's beyond my control and, and those things have happened. So just what, when in the process do you see, cause I've like, I've approved the cover. I'm working on the typesetting. When do I see the back cover? Um, Lisa works on it. Uh, you should, I mean, Lisa should have it ready for you sometime during the typesetting process. During, so it's during the typesetting. I, yeah, I mean, say. it just depends. Like when I was doing it, I try to get it all done at once. Um, but Lisa, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, but it shouldn't be too long from now. And yeah, not, not the actual copy, but like just how it looks, like the appearance of the back. Of the back cover? Yeah. I mean, usually that doesn't happen until we get the page count of your, uh, your typesetter manuscript. Okay, um, so you kind of approve the typesetting. And then before it's like, it's up, I was just trying to figure out that window between like you approve the typesetting and then you're uploading it, but when do you see to make sure the back is? So have you received the PDF yet? yet? <coughs> of the typesetting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it, at any point, you know, and, and, and honestly, when I was doing that, before we, we, we brought on Lisa to do it, mm -hmm. I was always a little concerned you know, because because at that point, you know, you get to have the front cover and the cover designer does the whole thing, including the spine. Yeah. And, and the spine is contingent upon the page count. And so right. some authors, they make little changes and then it changes the spine count, yeah. the spine width. And then the, the cover designer says, well, I need to charge you more for that. And so we, we take our time when we get toward the end, then that's a pretty quick turnaround. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not like a two week wait. It's like a 24 to 48 hour yeah. Wait before you get okay. the, the full cover. Gotcha. So, all right. Well, we're at seven ten. People are already dropping off. This I hope this has been helpful for everybody, um, and uh, we'll probably do it again very soon. And if you have more, if you have additional questions, contact Jen or me or or Jeff or Lisa Hawker, or Karen Bouchard, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. So.